So I'm going to start with talking about the BCG unresponsive and emerging treatments for BCG unresponsive. Start with the history. Uh, first, uh, in the 1908, uh, Calmette and Gorin they attenuate, uh, the attenuated strains of Mycobacterium uh, bovis. In 1921, was the first vaccination with BCG. 1924, the Russians that uh, they uh, had uh, uh, presented the first like a dot strain of BCG. And uh, in 1929, they were very interestingly found the relationship between the uh, tuberculosis and the cancer. They found the autopsy of the patients died with the tuberculosis. There was a lower risk of cancer. First uh, intraphysical treatment uh, was in 1955 was a tube Teba. Tice uh, BCG was in 1934, and uh, first time they used like an uh, intraphysical BCG was 1976, and the first RCT for BCG was in 1980 with Dr. Lam, and the 1990 is FDA approval. What's how BCG works? It works through both the like, immune uh, from the cellular response and the humoral response, and uh, first. Uh, BCG connects to the fibronectin in the urethelial cells and urethelial carcinoma, endocytosis to the to dendritic cells and also to the cancer cells that release some uh, antigens. Uh, and uh, with the interleukins like a six and eight, uh, starts like an immune response and attracts the other immune cells, the ground size, CD4, CD8 natural killer cells and macrophages. And by doing that, it uh, secretes more cytokines like uh, IL-1, 2, 15, and uh, interferon gamma and uh, uh, TNF-alpha, and then the starts that uh, increase the immune response to the cancer antigen. There are multiple trials uh, and uh, are going still. There's some report of phase one, phase two trial, retrospective trials. Overall, there are some intravesical chemos that I'm going to mention some of them. There is a immunotherapy, systemic or uh, intravesical, some targeted therapy. I'm going to uh, present some of the most important ones. So the, one of the, there's two treatments right now is FDA approved for this BCG unresponsive. One of them is like valrubicin. It just approved based on the 90 patient with the CIS who failed BCG. And 87% of them failed three induction course. They received the six weekly valrubicin. 21% had a complete response at six months. Only 8% had a durable response rate. And 56% uh, underwent radical cystectomy, and the 4% died with the bladder cancer. That was like the best treatment we had for a long time, or at least FDA approved. The treatment that, if you want to go to the intravesical ter therapy, there's a combinations are there. One of the combination has a, the most effective result is like a combination of the gemcitabine and docetaxel. In this study that they give a, uh, this sequential of the gemcitabine and docetaxel in a 276 patient, and the one and two year recurrence free survival rate were 60% and 46%. And high grade recurrence free survival rates were 65 and 52%. 43% of the patients went on to the cystectomy and 11 of them had a progression to the muscle invasive. The study from uh, Columbia team that used a phase one trial of the intravesical cabazitaxel, gemcitabine, and cisplatin. They reported the phase one trial, 18 patients with a high grade disease, 27.8 uh, 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 months of follow up, nine out of 18, 50% had a, a high grade T1, and 67% uh, uh, has CIS. There was no those limiting toxicity at one year recurrence free survival was 0.8, and uh, two years estimated recurrence free survival is a 0.664%. That's the very promising data we are waiting, you know. They hope though know, they add, you know, start a phase two trial. There is a studies mostly in Europe for a chemo hyperthermia. So there's a conflicting results from the hypo, uh, chemo hyperthermia. There is a, this one is a, from a, 
retrospective study from uh, multi-center uh, data that uh, they evaluated the mitomycin, uh, they give it with the hyperthermia delivered at 43 degrees over one hour. Recurrence-free uh, survival at 12 months uh, was a 55%, and at 24 months was a 48%. And when you look at the progression-free survival, it's very amazing, 98% at 12 months and 95% uh, in uh, 24. And in the patient with the CIS disease, six months complete response was 57%, and only one person has a disease recurrence. However, when they reported they faced three trial and uh, chemo uh, hyperthermia, the result was not that uh, great. And if you see here, in 104 patients that randomized, and uh, they controlled versus a uh, chemo hyperthermia, there is no significant difference, and the people with the CIS actually has like a worse, worse outcome, and only people uh, without CIS has a better outcome. So it's still they use it in Europe. There's some center here in the U.S. that use it, and it's still the data is uh, conflicting, and we need a better trial or result. Immune, immunotherapy. So as I said, there is a, some local immunotherapy, intraphysical. Some of them are systemic. Uh, CG0070 is an oncolytic uh, virus that uh, has a, goes like a selectively uh, attached to the cells that, like a cancer cells that have a defective uh, RB uh, pathway. So, and by doing that, it just do, uh, has a promoter there, and after that, it's, uh, as a virus start uh, dividing the cancer cells, lysis of the cancer cells, and release the antigens. 18 months follow-up from a multicenter phase two trial. 67 patients with the residual BCG unresponsive high-grade TA, T1, CIS, with or without a papillary lesion. The response rate was a 44% in six months and 23% at 18 months. And among the people that, uh, when they, uh, based on the subset of the people, that uh, people with the CIS as a worse outcome, and uh, none of the patients with the combination of the CIS with the T1 or TA had a, a complete response at 18 months. So from the adversary events that's well tolerated, and uh, maybe they can add it some uh, uh, biomarker for this study, some, uh, as I said, the retinoblastoma pathways involved, maybe based on that mutation. The other uh, trial is a like Altor 803 or uh, an AO3 trial that is uh, based on the intravesical uh, IL-15. That is, IL-15 has a three component. One of them is uh, some mutation that uh, enhance the attachment of the IL-15 to the interleukin-2 uh, uh, receptor. The second part has a, also increased the uh, attachment and the IGFC uh, part uh, increase the uh, half-life of the IL-15. And the, this is study they reported by Dr. Chamey group uh, from UCLA, cohort eight patient with the uh, BCG unresponsive CIS with or without uh, papillary lesion, uh, 80 patient in the follow-up of 10.7 months complete response at any time was a uh, 72%. That is a very promising result. And then the uh, probability of the maintaining complete response at 12 months was a 59%. Duration of a complete response, 19.2%. Well tolerated medication. Other trial is a, a NADO Faragen uh, or Instantadrine. So this is like another uh, adenovirus that is uh, non replicating and uh, increase the uh, attached to the cancer cells and in the secretes like a interferon uh, alpha 2, and also with the SYN3 part, increase that the transduction of the virus to the cells. Phase 3 results, primary endpoint was a complete response. As you see here, 150 patients were included, and then 53% of the patients uh, with the CIS had a complete response at three months. And uh, at 12 months, 24% uh, of the people had a durable response. Pembro. Pembrolizumab is a PD-1 uh, inhibitor that uh, with the change, you know, and another FDA-approved treatment we have in this field. 
open label, single or multi center phase two trial, and the very BCG unresponsive CIS with or without a papillary lesion. And uh, the primary endpoint was a clinical complete response rate. As you see here, uh, 101 patients uh, was treated, 96 were uh, included for efficacy. The median follow up was 36 months. 39 uh, out of the 96 patients had a complete response at three months, and the 46 percent of the people uh, had a complete response uh, lasting at least 12 months. And uh, adverse events, uh, grade three or four adverse events only occurred only 13 percent of the patient, and uh, serious treatment-related adverse events only eight patients, and there was no death was related to the uh, treatment. Again, at the end. Someone with a BCG unresponsive is still the radical cystectomy is the gold standard. As you see here, early cystectomy in the two years has a better outcome and delay in after two years. If you do for a non-muscle invasive, has a much better outcome than muscle invasive. And if someone is not eligible for, try, for a cystectomy or refuse, we have a Pembro. Valrubicin is not effective anymore. We, don't, we have a much better treatment, and we highly recommend the people on the clinical trial. We have a targeted therapies, with unium or immunotherapy. There's multiple ongoing trials right now. It's happening, and we are very interested to result of the IL-15 in the future, and of course, the combination of the uh, intravesical chemotherapy. Thank you.